Hey, what's up everyone? Just wanted to put out a quick video regarding my software that I announced in my last video. And so it's going to be a quick little update, so let's get right into it. Alright, so I know I said in the last video that if there was enough interest in this, that would make it available as a free download at some point in the future. And there's quite a lot of interest. So thanks for everyone for watching and commenting and letting, you know, letting me know that you're interested in it. So I definitely will be working towards making that available at some point soon. Um, but that's not what I wanted to go over in this video. In this video, I just wanted to highlight some updates that I've done since the last one. And starting with this, what's going on down over here. So I know in the last one I said it would primarily be available to Mac users at the start because I was still working through some Windows bugs and things like that. Well. I figured those out, and so now this is now running on a Windows machine. Now this is Windows 11. I still have to test it on other versions of Windows if I can get a hold of them, because I'm only using 11. I think I have an old computer somewhere that's running 10. I'll have to see if it's uh, if it still boots up. But so far so good. So that's looking good. Um, so I'll at least be able to have at least some sort of download for Windows users. So stay tuned to that. And then the next part, I'm going to go over a few little updates that I've made to the UI and some enhancements that I've made in the application itself. We'll go over those next. Okay, so let's go over some of the updates I made to the software. The first one is that I added the ability to add images to a variety of different entities. So we'll start with rail cars. You can see there's a rail car image field in the form now. So you can select JPEGs, bitmaps, GIFs, and PNGs. And once you open it and save the form and save it to your rail car. It'll actually take the image, auto resize it for you and do whatever conversion needs to happen. So you don't have to worry about doing that ahead of time. Just make sure the image looks like the way you want it to. I also added images for locomotives, locations, sections, and you can add an image for your layout as well. So let's go see what it looks like over in the operate view. Okay, so over here in the operate view, you can see there's already some pictures of rail cars on the car cards. They'll show here. They'll also show in this uh, view here when you double click it, and also in the view all view for the entire train or the location, they'll show there as well. Locomotives will show on the locomotive card and also in the unassigned locomotives list. And then you could see there's some images associated with the section and locations that I have here. So I'll start with the section. I just uploaded an image of just a track diagram for this particular section of my layout. And if you click on the one for the locations, they'll show there as well, along with some notes. And then for this particular image, I just highlighted that particular location on the track diagram. But you can upload whatever image you'd like. Also at the top, you'll see the layout name show up now. If you click that, that'll show the image for the entire layout. Whatever you wanted to upload there, I just uploaded the entire uh, track diagram for my whole layout. Let's go over a couple of the other quick features that I added here. I also added the ability to skip the timer if you wanted to. If you were to start this, let's say it takes five minutes, so you don't want to wait that long, maybe it's at the end of the session, you want to clear things out really quick, you can just go up to the menu and click Complete Timer, and that'll stop it for you. Can also reset that if that was a mistake as well. And then if you come up here to bulletins, aside from just scrolling, you now have the ability to just click on the bulletin title and that'll navigate right to that particular bulletin. It just makes it easier than trying to scroll through all, everything, uh, just trying to find what you're looking for. It's a quick way to get to it. All right, and that's about all the updates for now. Told you it'd be a quick one. So in the meantime, I'm going to start putting together a series of small videos that are highlighting all the different sections of the application because I haven't really written any instructions yet. That's going to take some time. I, I want to make it look good and I want to be able to you know, have it be presentable. But like I said, in the meantime, I'll put together a short series of videos on each section of the application so you can figure out how to do things if you do decide to download it and give it a shot. And then eventually what I'll do is I'll put together one video from start to finish, a uh, blank database to a finished layout. It'll probably be a recreation of this one here. It's not going to be too big of a layout, but I'll cover all the concepts in it. And so you could see you know, how you could apply it to maybe a larger layout if you wanted to, or try to figure out how it would work in your situation. So that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thanks for all your interest in this. So it really kind of propelled me forward to try to make this uh, become a reality. 
And so, yeah, happy about the Windows thing. There's still some weirdness with Windows, I've noticed. Um, it could just be, you know, Windows being buggy. Um, nothing that prevents the app from running, uh, but I've noticed there's some hiccups in the UI every once in a while. You kind of have to refresh a page, but, you know, eventually I'll work that out. The strange thing is it doesn't show many error logs or anything like that, so it's probably going to end up being a Windows thing. Maybe it's just the current version of Chromium that I've got going, so... We'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you uh, next time and take care.